at the moment there's a massive worldwide push to have every building heated using a heat pump. 40% of all the natural gas that's burnt in the world, 40% is, is used heating buildings. If we can replace them with heat pumps, there's a massive uh, saving to be made. This is my heat pump, it's two weeks old. It's taken me a year to have it installed. And I think many of the issues with heat pumps, good and bad, are a mirror for all the problems we're going to have transitioning to a zero carbon economy. So in this video, we're going to look at 10 issues I think that are relevant to both heat pumps and the general transition as a whole. I got this heat pump because the International Energy Agency said heat pumps are the way ahead. Heat pumps are the central technology in the global transition to secure and sustainable heating. Well, there's been heat pumps around for 40 years or even longer than that. In fact, in Britain, there's been tax breaks for anyone ordering a heat pump for the last 30 years. The International Energy Agency is the intergovernmental body who's responsible for planning the transition to net zero so as to meet the Paris 2015 uh, agreement of keeping temperatures well below 2 degrees Celsius and best efforts to keep them below 1.5 degrees Celsius, if that's even possible still. But by the International Energy Agency saying, right, we're all going for heat pumps, it's given everybody certainty. The British government, in fact, all governments around the world now are prioritising heat pumps. In the United States, even now, more heat pumps are being installed than gas boilers. In Europe, the number of installations are really taking off. Until now, we thought maybe we'll have hydrogen powered boilers or furnaces, as they call them in America, or infrared heat panels, or one of the other options. Now we've got the International Energy Agency showing leadership and has a plan. All the world's governments are trying to keep to that plan. It's given me certainty to know buying a heat pump is the right thing to do because the British government and governments all around the world will make sure the electricity tariffs mean they're affordable, that there be um, enough people trained to install them. Manufacturers now know they need to build more heat pumps. In an emergency, in fact, in any situation, if you have one plan and one leader and you stick to the plan, things are normally better than if you didn't have a plan and it was just everyone for themselves. The other thing that's important for certainty is consistency. When I started looking at getting a heat pump, the British government's paying £5,000 for every gas boiler that was removed, or gas, natural gas furnace that was removed, and replaced with a heat pump. Halfway through, the British government increased that payment to £7,500. I heard somewhere that one of the big national installers had over a thousand orders of heat pumps in a week. Well, there's no way they can keep up with that demand. So you need to have consistency so everyone can plan and look ahead. It's quite possible now there are some people thinking, well, I was going to buy a heat pump. The government's put the payment up to £7,500. If I wait a bit longer, maybe they'll go higher. Maybe, maybe I should wait. And it's not just heat pumps that this applies to. Britain's plan was that from 2030, all brand new cars needed to be electric. Recently, the British government put that target back to 2035. Well, suddenly the amount of electric cars being sold has gone down. Well, what are the um, car manufacturers meant to do? How do they know which type of car to build? So you need leadership, you need a plan, and you need consistency. And that gives everyone certainty and then we can all we can all get on that leadership is really important at the moment we're talking about a transition to car, to a zero carbon economy as climate change progresses it's quite possible our lives will become more difficult maybe the food supply will become interrupted due to extreme weather events the global economy will come, come under stress each country will suffer at different rates partly due to the um, the weather and the climate it suffers but also how well your government is organised, how much social cohesion there is in your country, the better your, um, your experience will be. So if you live in a good democracy, that means that the politicians who are elected into power prioritise the public interest, the long-term national interest, rather than maybe the interest of the politicians themselves or their political party, then, then your country will do better. It will endure the, um, the stresses of climate change better. At the moment, for example, the gold standard is being set by Finland and they're managing to uh, transition their homes from uh, gas boilers or natural gas furnaces 
to heat pumps at the rate of about 3% of all the homes in each year. So 33 years, they'll have transitioned all of them. And that's one of the reasons why the governments are quite keen to say we'll be carbon neutral by 2050, even that will be way too late, because it's not really practical to go any quicker, or at least they're not prepared to take the steps to go more quickly. Britain's targets aren't quite so good. They're trying to do 2.5% of all homes each year and move them to heat pumps. That would be about 600,000 installations every year. We're not doing that. Depending on how up-to-date your statistics are, we're doing something between about 60 and 120,000 a year, maybe a bit more now. You might think, well, 600,000 installations of a heat pump, but they're fairly new. Well, they're mature technology, but for people in Britain, because we didn't have certainty, we've been putting it off, and it's only recently we've started to push, so now we've got certainty. We're still not able to do the 600,000 installations needed. And you might think, well, obviously that's very difficult, but they're managing it in France. France is, in 2022, France is doing 600,000 heat pump installations every year. So, when push comes to shove, when climate change starts to have much more serious impacts to, government, to countries in the global north, which country do you think has the best government that will able, be able to respond to the pressures? France, who could, who's organised itself to do 600,000 installations, or Britain, who's struggling to even do a tenth or a fifth of that. Which country do you think got the better democratic electoral system that makes sure it gets the best leaders who prioritise national interest? Well, without certainty, without leadership, it's just wasted money. For example, to install this heat pump, there were four people came to my house every day for five days and then two people came back for a sixth day. They, they removed my modern 10-year-old condensing boiler, natural gas furnace, which is only 10 years old, and I bought that because at that time, the plan was we were all going to move to more efficient boilers and that was going to reduce our carbon emissions. 15 years ago, I replaced all the radiators in the house to make them larger, more efficient, ready for a condensing boiler. Also had a fairly new hot water tank. All of that's gone. Thousands of pounds have been replaced because we didn't have a long-term plan to tackle climate change. You know, 10 years ago, I could have had a heat pump if that was the plan for the government. That I, I want to follow the plan. In an emergency, you need to follow the plan and the leader. I think that's what the United Nations would call maladaptation. That instead of doing the actions necessary to tackle climate change, you just do things in the short term that are sort of politically expedient. I've wasted thousands of pounds. It's not just heat pumps it supplies to. In Europe, we went from petrol-powered cars to diesel. Now we're going to electric cars. 30 years ago, it's quite possible we could have transitioned to um, electric cars. We could carry on our lifestyles. We'd have, if we'd had enough renewable energy, everything would have been fine. Because we've left it so late to, to um, make the most ambitious climate change targets of cuts in our um, CO2 emissions, the only practical thing to do is more walking, more cycling, more public transport. So now, going to electric cars is an example of maladaptation, of not taking the che not taking the actions necessary, but just doing things that are easy and politically expedient. Another example of maladaptation is in the United States. I think it's the fifth or the sixth largest city is Phoenix in Arizona. I think that at the hottest time of the year to live there, really, you need air conditioning. But air conditioning heats up the area. It might take the warmth out of an individual room or a house. It moves that heat into the outside. And also the electric motors of the air conditioning units cause heat. Arizona's become this massive heat island. As climate change progresses, it will become even hotter there. The real solution to that, I think, is everyone to leave Arizona, the fifth or sixth largest city in America, and move to somewhere cooler with a long-term uh, future, wherever that is, where, where whatever part of the world has a long-term future. Just having more air conditioning, you're just putting your troubles off for the future sometime. To meet the most ambitious climate targets, which I think is what we need to do now, to have a good chance of keeping below two degrees Celsius, really we need to reduce our amounts of consumption, the amount of energy we use, the amount of manufactured goods we buy, because they have carbon footprints as well. Those sorts of things of reducing demand, reducing spending, 
always make governments very nervous because they think well there'll be job losses the economy will shrink we'll get less tax we won't be able to pay for our armed forces to protect ourselves in a changing world if you just look in the news all the troubles there are around the world if you say that to the consumer the millions of people living in britain you're going to have to have less maybe not heat every house in the room maybe not travel so much not eat so much meat you have anything that involves reductions that's very unpopular with the consumers and with the government so heat pumps are a good example of how is a popular way of cutting our carbon footprints and in fact heat pumps just make make your house much more comfortable because there's they're taking the warmth out of the air when you burn natural gas you get a lot of warmth very quickly if you I don't know if you looked at the air recently it does have some warmth in it not very much but it does have some warmth but there's an awful lot of it so the heat pump runs 24 hours a day possibly for the next 20 or 30 years just 24 hours a day they last longer than uh, gas boilers they're always taking the heat out they're always warming the house so the house is always comfortable you don't get any cold spots it's not cold first thing in the morning also it's a more modern system it's a more modern uh, hot water tank it's bigger it's much better insulated so it keeps the warmth in longer also it's what's called unvented which means you get a really good shower pressure I've just got lots of people in Britain including me just have a traditional gravity fed uh, shower that's just fed off the taps and the bath now it's sort of like a power shower and because heat pumps they have a ge gentle heat it heats the water up to 45 degrees celsius which is the ideal temperature for a shower so there's no jiggling about with hot and cold to get the right temperature you could use the immersion if you want to get right up to 60 and have a toasty bath so heat pumps it just sits on the on the patio 20 or 30 years possibly you forget about it it's very easy to do an important part of a successful transition to net zero is technology allowing you to carry on with your existing lifestyle to have this heat pump it cost me just over three thousand pounds the british government contributed seven and a half thousand pounds which brings the total up to about eleven thousand pounds and also there's no sales tax which in britain is called vat and it's 20 percent so Without government subsidies, it should have cost me £13,000 and it cost me £3,000 or just over. So if you're thinking to yourself, well done, count everything, you've put your money where your mouth is, you're trying to cut your carbon footprint, well, that's right, I've done something good. But if, you, if you're watching this and you live in Britain you and you're a taxpayer, you've paid £10,000 towards my new heat pump and you haven't even got a new heating system. So this part is about it's the wealthiest people always do better because they have more political influence than than people who aren't so wealthy and you think well 13,000 pounds that's very generous of the government or 10,000 pounds the government's donating that's very generous subsidy to someone I could have afforded to buy the heat pump outright if that was what the plan was but my heat pump is just a tip of the iceberg online in the discussion groups there are people saying the government is going to give me 33,000 pounds towards my heating system and it will completely cover the cost of the heating system and all the energy that is used so far. We had our ground source heat pump installed last year, in line to receive around £33,000, but that's increasing due to inflation. Our ground source heat pump is doing great, and the best part of all, every time the inflation rate goes up, so do our RHI payments, to the point where, at the end of the seven years, they will have paid for the entire install and all the energy used in that time. For £33,000 you can get a really big heating system and the sorts of people who are getting these massive um, payments live in massive houses in the countryside or those modern architectural houses you see in the television programmes. In Britain there's a television series called Grand Designs. They feature really millionaires building new houses in the countryside or in their own grounds. In the television programme, I've noticed they always say, oh yes, we're very concerned about the environment, we want to do something about climate change, so we're demanding a heat pump. Really, the British government is paying tens of thousands of pounds so they can have a free heating system. And it benefits the wealthy people in the countryside more than the people in the towns, because in Britain, if you live in a town, you've got access to natural gas. If you live in the countryside, it's quite possible you have a big oil tank in the back garden and you need tankers coming to your house. It's not just me that thinks this, listen to this. More taxpayer subsidised heat pumps have probably been fitted in Cornish holiday homes than the whole of Britain's second city, Birmingham. 
people are still hurting with the high energy bills, insulating the homes of the most in need should be the priority and not giving hard-earned taxpayers cash to those who are going to buy a heat pump anyway is utterly wasteful. When will the government actually listen to the people, the majority of whom simply cannot afford a heat pump, subsidised or not? It does not help people keep bills low, it takes from the poor and gives to the wealthy. Well, I agree with uh, what's written there, and having good insulation, reducing our need for energy, is much more important than um, subsidising millionaires to buy their heating system. And in fact, because I was very concerned not to use any more natural gas than necessary, I only used to switch the heating on, the gas heating on, if it was bitterly cold outside, otherwise I'd just heat a single room. With this heat pump, the house is lovely and warm all the way around, lots of hot water. It's quite possible my energy use will go up. Anyway, thank you British taxpayer for paying for my new heating system. And again, the wealthy have uh, more political influence. And it's not just heat pumps they benefit from, it's also things like electric cars. If you run your own business, you can write off a, the cost of a brand new electric car 100% against your profits from the business. From the 6th of April 2020, businesses can claim 100% of the cost of an electric vehicle against profits of the year of purchase and there are no restrictions on the value of the vehicle. I know someone, he's not a friend, but I know them. They seem to buy an electric vehicle quite regularly, maybe once every two or three years, maybe on one occasion, they kept it for a year and got another electric vehicle. So say your business made £100,000 in profits, you, could, you would need to pay, I think it's 20% tax, which interestingly, I think is lower than the rate of income tax for that amount. You, so you get, you get to keep £80,000, you pay £20,000 in tax. If instead you decide to buy a top-of-the-range electric car for £100,000, well, you get to keep all that £100,000, so the British government is effectively giving you a, a subsidy of £20,000. Well, this comes at a time where the war in Ukraine has led to increased energy prices. There are some people who, through no, no fault of their own, are no longer able to pay their electricity and gas prices. The big energy companies found it quite easy to get court warrants that allowed them to break into people's homes and replace their electricity meter with a, a prepayment meter. So people would come home, found the house had been broken into, found the meter had been replaced. They didn't have any way of paying for the, for the electricity to give them light or heating, cook their food. And you know, there's families of young children who are suffering in this way. At the same time, the British government has given me £10,000 towards my new heating system, something that I could have afforded to pay myself and I should have done because all I'm doing is cleaning up my own pollution. Now there is a scheme called Eco4 which is where the energy companies contribute to the cost of improving the energy of people's homes who are on benefits and they, they will pay for like you can get a free heat pump, they will in, improve your insulation and also the British government has recently announced it will start to, to give more money to people on low wages so they could improve their, their housing. But the point still stands, an awful lot of money is going to the wealthiest people because the wealthiest people have the most political influence. And although I'm talking about heat pumps and Britain, I think that principle is a global one. It's the wealthiest countries who have the largest carbon footprints but it's the poorest countries who are suffering the most from climate change. I need to point out the current political party in power in Britain is the Conservative Party, it's the party of the rich. Well, that question we had at the beginning, how well your government is run, depends on how healthy your democracy is and whether your politicians prioritise the national interest. The Conservative Party, the party of the rich, is giving quite generous subsidies to the wealthy people, not quite so generous to the ordinary people. So that's like the theory. Now a bit of the practical experience I've had having my heat pump installed. When I had my, ga my modern gas boiler installed 10 years ago, it took about two weeks to get three quotes. They're all from local heating engineers. And because they're local and there wasn't much to do, they could just come round after work, spend 20 or 30 minutes looking at the house and give me their sales pitch. After two weeks, I just chose one. The prices were all about the same. I just chose one I thought was better. With a heat pump, that's not how it works at all. First of all, you need an energy performance certificate to show your house has got good insulation. Then to have three quotes, 
people have to come quite long distances and they have to measure up the house quite accurately they have to all the dimensions the size of the windows what type of insulation you've got because a heat pump to work efficiently needs to be sized correctly there are 29 million homes in Britain that are getting a lot of public money to upgrade you have to do it properly you can't waste all that money and do it all over again because there was a problem so I had three quotes you would need to take four days off because one of them had to come back and do it again there were some technical problems and that's because the people doing the surveys aren't heating experts they just they had some basic training they follow a checklist it's people back at the office who understand about heat pumps because if you've got 29 million homes to have the heat pumps installed as quickly as you can it was very slowly but as quickly as they can manage it there aren't enough heating engineers available so you need four days off work for um for the surveys then what else have i got i had artex in my house one of the suppliers that i wanted to go with was concerned about the artex so i had you would need to have one day off so someone could come and check the artex to see if it contains asbestos mine contained asbestos so i need to use a special chemical to remove it took quite a long time then you need to take another day off work for someone to come and check that the, there's no asbestos in the air then uh the night then you need to be at home for three extra days to have the electricity supply upgraded my house had to go from 60 amps to 100 amp someone had to come to the house to say it wasn't ready a second person had to come to the house to upgrade some cables so it was ready for 100 amps a third person had to come and check the cables incorrectly and then upgrade the fuse then i had one pre-installation visit and that's the first time i actually met someone who knew how heat pumps worked then it took six days you need to be at home for six days during the installation the following day there was a leak it's another day of work then you have one post installation visit and they come and check it's working okay if you've got any questions so i think that's something like 18 or 19 days off work you need to take and during that time between instead of having say three quotes within two weeks you can compare them it's quite often was like six weeks or two months three months between each quote because you know there's long delays where you have to take your place in the queue well each quote lasts uh, 28 days so if you want to compare them you have to get the quotes reissued so you can get the best price also i had to move the airing cupboard door out into the hallway a little bit to take the larger um hot water tank the kitchen door no longer fully opens because now there's an enormous radiator in the way because heat pumps heat the water to a lower temperature so you need bigger radiators to get the same warmth out of them and halfway through i had to fix the toilet because the high pressure unvented system was just too much for the stopcock on the toilet so that was a little job well the house is full of heating engineers i fixed the toilet but my insulation was quite straightforward some people report the house is so big they need a uh, three phase electricity supply some people report they've been quoted somewhere between three and thirty thousand to do that sometimes i've seen reports where the electricity company will do it for free because they were going to do it anyway uh, for some reason you need high pressure water if your water doesn't have a high enough pressure some people have been quoted three to thirty thousand pounds to have that upgraded some houses in britain especially if they're old in the countryside they share the electricity supply with other houses so you have to have your electricity supply it's called unlooped you have to have a legal agreement with your neighbors you have to pay for that work to be done uh, if you have an old house it's quite possible your uh, radiator pipes will start to leak under the high pressure so you have to have all that replaced as well and also some houses no longer have airing cupboards where you can put a hot water tank because as part of our push to go to modern gas boilers which was a, a maladaptation some people had what was called combi boilers installed and those are boilers that are so powerful they're able to heat the water quickly enough so you have instant hot water and you don't need to store in a hot water tank heat pumps uh, gentle heating you need a hot water tank to store to gradually heat it up so you might if you haven't got a heat an airing cupboard anymore or if your house was built without an airing cupboard you need to find a one meter square area of space somewhere in your house possibly in a bedroom or in the garage or somewhere like that the point i'm trying to make is to have a heat pump in Britain in 2023, you have to be quite keen. An ordinary person isn't necessarily going to want to take 18 days of work during the year, just so they can replace the heating system if the boiler's still in good condition anyway. 
So not only do you need leadership and certainty and a plan that everyone wants to stick to, not only do you need huge amounts of government money, you need people keen to want to do it. Partly they might want to do it because it will improve their house and make it more comfortable to live in. But you still need people to be concerned about climate change to want to do that sort of thing, I would suggest. Also, I say all that list of things wasn't enough. The social media is full of photographs of people reporting the outside pipes aren't properly lagged. So the heat is generated here, is pumped into the house through these pipes. If you don't have good insulation, you'll lose a lot of heat and you'll be wasting energy. Also, the heat pump has to be uh, 350 or 300 millimetres away from the wall to get a good efficient flow of air. There are all sorts of photographs of heat pumps put too close. It's something that's very easy to do when you're installing it, but there's a massive rush. There aren't enough people trained. There are lots of cowboys in Britain that seem to be happy to take the money and just put something in. And the prob problem is, we've left it so late, things are so desperate now, it's become very inefficient. It's a case of more haste, less speed. So the longer you carry on, not doing enough to tackle climate change, the more difficult you're just making things for yourself. Well, you might think, well, there are lots of problems, but at least the whole world is on board. We're all heading for uh, heat pumps to heat our homes. That's good. Well, it is good, but not everyone's on board. Some people are actively trying to slow down the insulation of heat pumps and are even encouraging people to go to gas boilers. And those people include the manufacturers of heat pumps. The trouble is people who make heat pumps are also those who make gas boilers. There's no future for gas boilers or natural gas furnaces. But in the short term, I can imagine somebody's bonus, maybe the dividends of that year, depend on selling more gas boilers. So this is what's going on. Boiler manufacturers do not want to change their businesses as fast as is needed. Their trade body has paid companies to spark outrage about heat pumps among the general public. There are probably people posting negative comments in the social media groups. And as I know from my research, the gas industry has been lobbying government heavily to slow down their rollout. So that's an example where it's important you have a healthy democracy so you have politicians who are going to prioritise uh, the national interest when they're in power. And the other group of people who want to try and slow down the transition to heat pumps are house builders. There are houses being built now in Britain that, that are being built to have gas boilers and not to have heat pumps. I had to have Four people come to the house every day for five days. I had to have £10,000 of government money because a lot of that cost was retrofitting, taking out the old stuff, changing the new stuff, finding a route um, from, the, from the heat pump outside, the air and cupboard inside. Fortunately, mine just goes above the um, patio doors. Some people go right up into the roof. It's a real palaver. All the house builders are doing is putting off a time when someone's going to pay thousands of pounds to have it all retrofitted, have the house all changed again. Two thirds of new homes built in England in the year to the end of March 2022 use gas for central heating. According to data compiled by the Office for National Statistics following a request by Open Democracy, experts have warned households will face large bills to retrofit properties as a result of watered down or delayed plans to cut greenhouse gas emissions. When they say households face large bills, what they mean is the British government will have to pay them £10,000 towards the retrofit process. And why is that happening? Last year, Boris Johnson, who was the Prime Minister then, was persuaded to delay a ban on developers connecting new homes to the gas grid. And why, why is the British Prime Minister prepared to let house builders save by just plonking in gas boilers rather than doing it properly and have a heat pump, when he knows the British government is going to have to pay thousands of pounds to have it retrofitted later on? At least 10% of donations received by the Conservative Party since 2010 came from property developers, real estate tycoons and others connected with the construction industry. Another example of where you need a healthy democracy so that your government prioritises the national interest and not the interest of their political party or the interest of themselves. At the moment in Britain there's a public inquiry into the Covid pandemic. There was something during that time the VIP lane, where if you're a friend of a government minister or a Conservative member of parliament, there's the Conservative Party who are in power at the moment, if you're a friend, if you're well connected, 
you were able to nominate a friend who ran a business producing uh, protective personal equipment, you know, masks and gowns, things like that, or anything to do with COVID, and you got preferential treatment. There's all sorts of concerns now about, well, I'm not sure anyone's formally said it's corruption, but lots of people made money in dodgy circumstances. So how do you think it's going to go when we have the climate emergency really starts to kick in? So what point was that? That's, uh, that was point number eight. And the point number eight was, the longer you have house builders who don't want to install heat pumps, the longer you have heat pump manufacturers who want to sell you gas boilers, the longer you rely on big oil because you haven't transitioned quickly enough from a high carbon economy, the more difficult it is to transition because these people have so much power. Your economy still depends on them and they're not going to help you like with heat pumps. So, number nine now are jobs. Ten years ago, the three local heating engineers came to the house. It's sort of a cottage industry. Most of the um, heating engineers, they have their own businesses. It's a one-man operation. You need quite a team to lift a heat pump. Five people, no, four people came to the house for four days. It's a much bigger operation. 29 million homes to transition. How do you think these traditional heating engineers are going to cope? The heating industry is currently dominated by sole traders and SMEs, I think that's small and medium enterprises, and the average age is over 50. Older installers are much less interested in retraining. The need to recruit young people is widely recognised, but there are few avenues for new entrants and little promotion of heating engineering as a career for young people. SMEs are unlikely to take on apprentices due to the cost and time commitment. If you want to transition 29 million homes to heat pumps as quickly as possible. You need a massive industrial process. Octopus has already committed 10 million pound investment to its research and development and training center dedicated to the decarbonization of heat and has begun training engineers at the rate of 1,000 a year. And what's happening to the local uh, heating engineers? The people you thought might benefit from having to upgrade all these homes. Yet, hearing the same from other distributors, we're not as busy as we'd like with heat pumps ourselves. Octopus hoovering up the easy installs by almost giving them away. Octopus, a national installer, they're able to negotiate uh, good deals on buying the equipment. They're able to train or try and train a thousand uh, engineers a year. Those are the those are the future. If the government needs you as part of the transition to heat pumps, you're going to get a lot of money if you're a consumer. If you're a boiler manufacturer or installer, you'll get a lot of money. If you're not part of that plan, this world isn't about fairness. You'll just be left to carry on as you were before. And there are still lots of gas boilers. They'll need servicing, so they won't go bust completely. I'm talking about heat pumps, but I'm guessing this aspect will apply to all aspects of the transition to a zero carbon economy. It's going to have to be done on an industrial scale lots of industries will be disrupted and there's no guarantees for anyone's job. So that was point number nine. And now point number 10 is my favorite one because have you noticed I had a perfectly good heating system. I spent effectively 13,000 pounds and I've still got a good heating system. It will have an economic benefit because there's more money in the economy, people doing work. But all I've effectively paid is for effectively someone to dig a hole in the ground and then fill it back in again. We have to do this because otherwise you won't have a sustainable future. But at the same time, by spending money in this way, it's going to be less good for the economy, less good for long-term growth. And the problem is all civilizations cope with problems. This is fairly well understood by academics. All civilizations cope with problems by adding overheads. There's a massive overhead with heat pumps all sorts of standards you have to stick to, much more difficult to install. As the whole human world has to change, the amount of overhead is going to increase. It's not going to contribute very much to the uh, GDP or, the, or productivity or the quality of our lives. We've got to do it, otherwise civilization will face collapse. If, if it's not done properly, just the overhead and the extra work could put our civilization to decline and lead to its collapse. This is better explained in my number one selling video, uh, Climate Change and the Collapse of Civilization Decade by Decade.
so watch that video but this is an example I think of overheads and extra costs putting our economies and our civilization at risk that's point number 10 so that's those are my 10 points about how heat pumps mirror everything that's going on with uh, our transition to a zero carbon economy have you noticed there's one thing I haven't really mentioned that much and that's climate change you see it very rarely discussed in social media groups about heat pumps I didn't meet anyone in my odyssey to get heat pump I didn't meet anyone concerned about climate change not the surveyors or the installers I don't think any of them had a heat pump themselves they have a good um, they have a good contribution to climate change because 40% as I think I said 40% of all the natural gas burnt in the world which is all methane is used to heat buildings that could be heated by heat pumps instead in Britain the carbon density of electricity is about half that of natural gas for every one kilowatt of electricity a heat pump uses to run it's able to generate three or four kilowatt hours of heat energy so my back of, my back of the envelope calculation says it will reduce my carbon emissions from heating the house by 85% so only producing 15% of the CO2 to heat the house as they did before if you ignore the fact I'm going to be using probably more energy because I'm now heating the whole house and it's all going to be lovely and comfortable as the electricity generation gradually decarbonizes as we have more wind and solar and more renewables that in the end should hopefully go to zero possibly by 2030 so it's a really good thing to do and this is why I'm making the video because most YouTube videos want to sell you a t-shirt or something I want you to spend thousands of pounds on your home completely disrupt your internal decoration and get a heat pump because if we can get somewhere between 10 and 30 percent of people having heat pumps this is what the United Nations thinks then then they will become a social norm and everyone will expect to have a heat pump and they'll want one whether they whether they done the careful thinking about it or not because it's a social norm it will be a social tipping point so thank you for watching well done for getting to the end of the video most people don't get to the end of my videos so well done and um, I think that's everything this is my new heat pump